The problem of rare cancer is a huge one. Although people think that cancer is a common disease, the very many subtypes of cancers are many of them, almost most of them are rare cancers. This is because uh, if we have uh, malignant lymphoma, for instance, we have more than 40 different types. So although the group in itself seems to be a uh, frequent tumor in elderly patients at least, as a subtype, these types mostly are rare. And the same holds true for many other diseases. Even in breast cancer, you will have specific subtypes. You will have second or third line treatment and the indications for these treatments are orphan indications. So there are just a few very frequent cancers where we have first line options which are really not orphan diseases, but very, very many even frequent diseases during the course of disease. If they don't respond to the first or second line treatment, then they start to begin to be rare indications. Well, uh, almost all children and young adults do have rare cancers. This is a good situation as far as we are happy that cancer is not a frequent disease in young people. In elderly patients, which means between 50 and 60, we have a slope which goes dramatically up and we have frequent cancers. This is breast cancer in women, um, lung cancer in both genders, then prostate cancer, colon cancers. These are the most frequent cancers. But there are many, many other malignant diseases, solid tumors and hematological malignant diseases, and most of them are true orphan diseases. Although we don't know too much uh, at the very moment about the genetic influence in uh, these rare cancers, we know that all cancers are genetic. So is it hereditary? That's uh, one of the big problems. Or is it acquired? So the hypothesis is that uh, orphan diseases in younger people mostly are genetic. The potential of peptide is, in our view, quite high. We have a lot of small molecules, we have antibodies, but peptides uh, themselves have been a little bit disregarded. Mostly, we think, because the patent situation does not really cover um, the investment um, of the development of proteins in uh, therapy of cancer. Peptides are seen as usually quite well tolerated drugs. Some of them are already known and have uh, clear indications also in cancer medicine. But a whole range of very interesting peptides could be very helpful, especially if they are combined together with already existing therapies, because they have a high specificity and they are very interesting partners of other drugs because of pathomechanism, where we know quite exactly which types of blocking or which types of activating agents are needed in order to have best therapies. Uh, cancer is a fascinating disease because it has to do with the whole variability of our genome which is necessary actually to have evolution as a principle in the development of any uh, being. So 
what cancer actually is, is it's an extreme disease of genetic variation. It's a genetic variation which usually does not help us in individual lives. Although it might be that some genetic changes actually do contribute in a positive way, that for instance other diseases are less likely to occur, but eventually this will only be helpful if we are able to treat cancer sufficiently well so that most people will survive cancer and then it might be that some actually of the genetic changes which lead to cancer could also protect people from other diseases. But that's not yet the problem, we are not really there. But uh, the genetic uh, field will be the most important field to guide us to understand the disease far better than we do now and also to find uh, new therapeutic tools.